With all of the color choices to choose from, how in the world are you supposed to select just a few for a paint pour? We'll go over a few ways of how I select the paints for my pours and hopefully I can help you out along the way. So these are a bunch of the paint colors that I have to choose from. I'm sure other people have a lot different varieties, especially stores, <laughs> almost an unlimited amount of supplies. So how do you choose which ones to use? Personally, I've kind of always classified my paints as a light color, a medium color, and then a dark color. So like black is a dark color, white is a light color. And then maybe medium will be one of the medium shades. It's not dark, it's not light, so it's right in the middle. So for me, I always like to choose a dark, at least a dark and a light, and then add in some medium colors as I see fit. So if I wanted to do a paint in greens, I might choose a dark green and a light green, maybe a medium green. So I'm gonna try to find my darkest green, which is, looks like it's this black forest. So I would use this one, maybe some emerald might work still a little on the dark side so it's kind of a medium dark as i would call it and then a light ooh jadeite that sounds fun and it's metallic so ooh, some real color in there <laughs> well <laughs> hopefully you get the idea so we have our dark medium and light and that might actually look really fun. You could also do, I mean, you can always just do dark and light. You can do medium and light, dark and light. <laughs> so long as you have at least some kind of dark and medium, some kind of contrasting colors, that's always going, I shouldn't say always, it's usually going to produce the best colors because it has that contrast, which is why I always tend to go with a light color and a dark color. But it always kind of depends on my mood, <laughs> what I'm going for, or if I can't pick a color, I'll narrow it down that way. So like maybe I'll do a dark purple. Oh, I guess this is dark blue. So let's do like a dark blue, a yellow, and then if I wanted to do a red for primary colors, I might do like a darker medium red. Or you could do a pink, like a light pink. That would work too. So for me, I like choosing a dark color and a light color for the contrast. It just produces a better overall picture once it's done. If you choose a bunch of kind of medium based colors without having that light and that dark, sometimes it, the painting can turn out a little muddied. So like I actually have this one. It was, I used too little of pink, too little of blue, and you can barely see it amongst the white and black. So it turned out really muddy. And so unfortunately I should have used more of the medium colors in that or the bright colors to pull out more of a contrast. And then I also have another example. So I used too many of the medium shade of pinks, not enough of the darker pink, and then the gold and the copper kind of blended in with all of the pinks. So it kind of looks like the same color, which that wasn't the look I was going for. So to me, this looks a little muddy. Whereas if I had used a brighter pink, a darker pink, and a lighter pink, it would have had more color, more pop. But this is how you learn. So for this painting, I'm trying to think of what I want to use because I am also having a hard time picking out what colors to use at the moment. Golds or pinks or reds. I want to do a mixture of everything. So let me put some of the colors back. 
So I'm, I'm a sucker for this color. So I'm a sucker for this color. So this aqua green. So I know I want this one. So I'm going to start with that. So I have my kind of light to medium. So I know I'm going to need a dark. So I might want to do a dark purple. I'm going to do the dioxin. <laughs> I'm so bad at pronouncing things. Dioxin. Dioxazine. Dioxazine purple. <laughs> Apologies if I butcher the names. Let's see. And then I want a blue, but I want something a little bit darker or lighter than this shade. So like my eyes went to this one, but it's a little it's a little too close, so I want something a little bit darker. So I might yeah, I might do that one. And then I need I need like a, a more of a pop. So either a yellow or an orange or a coral. So I might go for Nah, I'm not in an orange mood today, and that's a little too, a little too much. So let's find. Gotta have. Oh, there we go. That could work. Or if I really, and it's a, it's a metallic, so that helps too. But then if I also want a little bit of, no, oh, I don't want more pink. I'm gonna do a lighter blue as well, since I can't seem to make up my mind. Might as well do more colors. So where's my light blue? No, this one's too similar to this, so I'm gonna put that on back. Ooh, that's pretty too. Okay, so I have two light blues to choose from. I have a regular matte blue and then a metallic blue. So which one do I choose? <laughs> so that's the hard part. I could do both. Um, I kind of don't want to though. So I have two metallics, two regulars. So I could do either. <laughs> I could do either a metallic or I could do another matte blue. So I'm... I don't want to overwhelm the painting with too many metallics. I'm going to do the light blue. Yeah. Light blue it is. Okay, so we have our colors. Well, now that we have our paint colors picked out, it's time to mix them with our pouring medium, and then it'll be time for our pour. So let's jump right in. Oh, 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 o